So that's what we call a trash landing. My name is Spiros Frangos. I am a professor of surgery at the NYU School of Medicine. Today we're going to be reviewing some movie clips and talking about the injuries that the characters sustain. I remember seeing that movie uh, 30 years ago. Beverly Hills Cop was a true classic. A couple of things come to mind here. Number one, that window really breaks very, very easily. I probably would have expected him to bounce off it. In terms of injuries, though, not a scratch. You can see his, his shirt has no blood on it, not a single cut across his face, his scalp, his hands, no blood on his T-shirt. Kind of odd. She coughs up a little bit of blood. Maybe she sustained some airway trauma. The meteor hammer hits black mamba across the middle of her upper chest. If you shatter your, your, your breastbone, you're gonna be in a lot of pain. The way she bounced up after that kind of an injury probably wouldn't happen that particular way. I, I don't think she'd, she'd, she'd probably be in too much pain. I'm gonna straight up murder your ass. Hey, hang on, man. I did not see that coming. So a couple of observations with this one. Obviously, this is meant to be comedic. It's a very clean machete type amputation. Uh, what's interesting to me is there's absolutely no evidence of blood loss, which is kind of odd. You, you'd, you'd expect, since the vessels are transected on end, you'd expect there to be some bleeding. If that were me, I probably would have looked for an elevator. Be that as it may, he did put his seatbelt on prior to engaging in the death plunge. We talk in trauma about the LD50. That's the height at which 50% of patients uh, are likely to die. And that's about 48 feet. That corresponds to about four stories. In this particular scenario, the drop is probably two or three times that. So there is no way that he would not have sustained major trauma throughout his body, head, abdomen, pelvis. Uh, he would have been concussed. It is very unlikely that he would have been able to crawl out of that vehicle. So that scene is particularly unrealistic. The airbag did deploy. Airbags in and of themselves can cause some thermal or chemical burns when they do deploy. So just something to remember. The first arrow looks like it penetrates his left upper chest, probably misses his heart, probably gets his lung, which can lead to what we call a pneumothorax, which is a collapsed lung. That takes some time to develop. So hypothetically, he could continue fighting. Certainly having you know, an arrow can impede the local muscles from appropriately uh, moving and allowing him to continue engaging in the battle. The second arrow hits him in the abdomen. Very likely it could have gotten his stomach or his intestines. Those two hobbits were of no help at all. I was a teenager in the 80s and everybody knew you don't mess with Steven Seagal. Tommy Lee Jones sustains a pretty superficial laceration to his left wrist. I don't think it was deep enough that was gonna get the tendons or the arteries in the veins. Obviously, that's what you're concerned about here. I think he probably could have kept fighting. There's no question that getting shot in the leg will immediately impede your ability to subsequently perform a jump. Uh, and in this case, not a short one. The bones of the leg, the tibia and the fibula, certainly can get fractured by a high velocity, large caliber bullet. In addition, there are arteries and veins and nerves that can also be affected. It does impact his ability to jump towards the helicopter and that's kind of relayed by the fact that 
Mio says, oh, I gotta help him out. So it, it, it's, it's kind of realistic. Never try shocking English teacher, okay? <laughs> In this particular clip, the, the main character is punched in the face, knocked out. By definition, that's a concussion. He loses uh, his ability to uh, think and he loses awareness. The face and the bones of the face act almost as an airbag for the brain. So the face is protective of the brain. So it's much less likely that you will lose consciousness if you're punched directly in the mouth, for example. Concussions over time uh, can be additive, and it's, it's a very hot topic nowadays as to the negative consequences of many concussions over time. The one problem I have with this particular scene is the fact that when he pulls the knife out, there is a spray of blood that hits Leo in the face. That's kind of unrealistic. When you're bleeding into your abdomen, that blood collects and pools on the inside. It doesn't spray out. I don't believe you got it in you, Jake. I'm gonna go get it right now. Oh, shit! Ah, you mother! The next one will kill you. So getting shot in the backside, not always a funny thing. There are lots of structures uh, in your pelvis, including your bladder, your rectum, lots of vessels and nerves that, that traverse the area. This can be a life-threatening uh, injury. That said, uh, frequently the bullet does just get lodged in the muscles of the buttocks, and that's that, and there's not a lot to do. In this particular case, uh, I like the fact that he didn't fall over. Not everybody who gets shot needs to fall, so that makes it uh, a little realistic to me. I like that. So we've seen a lot of, you know, motor vehicle collisions, falls, epic battles. It's entertaining. A lot of the big Hollywood blockbusters have a lot of this, uh, but it's important to remember that injury is the leading cause of death for individuals under 45. And my only concern sometimes is that we get a little bit desensitized to the violence that we see in movies, uh, certainly as that relates to gun violence. Be that as it may, I, I have to admit that as a trauma surgeon, uh, when I go to the movies, I'm always thinking about the realism of uh, particular injuries um, to the fact that sometimes it ruins the movie for me. Thank you.